Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click. Did you ever see an app that uses buttons to represent selection states? And then when those buttons are clicked, you actually see that they go from a active or non-active state? Well, stick with me in this next Do More with Click Tips and Tricks edition, and I'll demystify how all of that's done. Okay, so here's the completed example we're gonna work on. In this case here, we're looking at an order status and we have two values, complete and pending. And I decided to represent those order status values as icons. So we have a check for orders that are complete and a clock for orders that are pending. And you can see as I cycle back and forth with these buttons, the actual icon changes from an active or not active state. Let me show you how we're gonna do this. Let's go into our sheets and let's create a new sheet. And let's edit our sheet. Now, the first thing we need to do is have a set of icons. Now in Photoshop, I've just created icons that represent an active or not active state. How you do this is up to you. So here we have our green checkbox active state, and then we have our checkbox not active state, clock active, clock not active. So the checkbox is for complete and the clock is for pending values. All you need to know here is to size it appropriately and to export it with PNG alpha transparency. That way you don't have a background color as part of your image. Once you've exported these images, you're going to then import them into the click application. But before we do that, let's start creating our buttons and setting up our variables. The only variable you'll have to set is a variable that's going to represent the selection state for the value of complete or pending. So here I just have a single variable called V selected underscore status. And we're going to use that a little bit later. The way I like to do this with the buttons is I like to create one button, customize it, and then make changes to it and duplicate the button. So within the chart objects, I'm going to grab the button and we're going to go directly to general and we're going to turn off show titles. And then we're going to clear out the label. And then for styling, we're going to make sure that the background color is set for transparent. And then under chart, you're going to see we have background options, background image. We're going to choose media library and we're going to select our uploaded PNG files. So the first one we're going to do is active complete. And then for the background options, you can see it's set to single color. We can make that transparent, but in this case here, it doesn't seem to be uh, working in this case. So what we're going to do is we're going to select by expression and we're going to use ARGB, which is a expression for alpha background color. We're basically just setting the percentages to zero, which is going to give us a white background. And then we can resize this appropriately. So that is our button. And we're going to make sure that our setting is set to always fit. That way, when we resize it, we get the appropriate size that we want. Okay, next we're going to set actions. So we're going to add an action. And the first action is going to be to set the variable. So here we have a option to set variable value. The variable we want to select is V selected status. And then the value you want to give it is going to be complete, which is the valid value in the data. Now this technically could be anything because it's setting the variable for the show state, which we'll do later. I like to keep it the same name as the value that I'm using. Now we're going to add another action. And then that action is going to set the value selection. So here we're going to select values in a field. The field we're going to choose is order status and the value we're going to give is complete. Okay, now let's just go back to our previous sheet that we had a moment ago, and I'm just gonna copy the filter box, paste it, and I'm also gonna copy the chart and paste it so you can just see the visual representation as we're building it in real time. And then I'll go into analysis mode and you can see when I click the checkbox, it applies complete as the filter. Okay. That's all it does. It's also setting the variable under the covers. 
So now we're going to repeat this for the not active state. So I'm going to control C and control V. And as far as the actions and the variables, there's, you can leave those alone. You don't have to make any changes. We, all we need to do is make a change to the appearance, styling, chart, and we're going to select the deactive or the not active complete. And that's all we need to do there. Now I'm going to control C and I'm going to control V, put another button in. And we're going to change this styling to the pending. And we'll do active pending. But now we got to make some changes to the button. So we're going to change the value from complete to pending. And we're going to do that in both places here. Select variable value as well as select field value. And now we have our pending. Okay, so when that's clicked, now we have pending selected and we have complete selected, right? This is just a good example for just like single values, creating something that's very easy to navigate and for users to apply when they're doing their analysis. Control C, Control V once again, and then we're just going to change the way this looks. Appearance, styling, chart, and we're going to choose the not active pending. That's the grayed out version. So now you have basically four buttons with different appearances and two of the buttons basically apply those actions for pending or completed values. So then what I like to do is after my buttons are complete, I put them in my master items library. Now I already have some here on the visualizations here. Um, so what I'm going to do, so you can see this in real time, I'm just going to drag it into my visualization library and I'm going to call this complete active and this was going to be complete not active and this one's going to be pending active and this will be pending not active Okay, now that we have our buttons in our master items library, we can now set up a layout container. And to do that, we're going to go to our custom objects. And in the click dashboard bundle, there is our layout container. And then you'll see here, I can add content. So the content I'm going to add are those new buttons that we just added. So here's complete active. I could freely move that around. and size that appropriately. And then I can go to content and then add, and now we can add complete not active. Now the trick is to obviously line them up and keep them the same size if you want like to do that. And I'll show you some of the adjustments that you can play with. Then we're gonna do pending active. Use your guidelines for sizing purposes if you'd like. and then pending not active. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is set up the show hide conditions. Okay, and that's as simple as selecting each of your objects. Now keep in mind, you're gonna to wanna to select them here because selecting them here, the other ones are covered, so you're only gonna get the uh, ones that are covered without moving them. So use this selection. So the first ones we're going to do is complete active. And the show condition for this is going to be a single tick dollar sign parentheses and the name of the variable. Now, what you can do is you can just type in V and the variable will pop up, but we got to represent it as a literal. In this case, exactly what it's going to be displayed the way it's resolved. So we're going to use equal sign single tick, dollar sign, open parentheses, close parentheses. And you can see in the bottom status, it actually shows you the value that's there. And this is going to be equals to the value we want, in this case, complete. And then copy and paste that, because now we're going to reuse this a few times. 
Okay, so that's the show condition for complete active. Now we're gonna go to complete not active show condition. I'm gonna paste in the same exact expression, but change the equal sign to not equal. Click apply. And then we're gonna to go to pending active. Once again, this is going to be equal pending. Copy that expression, click apply, and then pending not active, paste that in, and then choose not equals. And that's all we need to do. So at this point, now we have our container with our buttons. So if I choose this button here, you can see it's active. Now, once I choose the pending, you can see that the pending is now active and the complete is deactive and you can cycle through both of them just like this. Now, this is just a simple way of representing these buttons. You can also have logic in here. And I've done this in other examples uh, for multiple selections or if um, when you have like an initial selection state. And then you could also set this up when you come to the sheet, both buttons are grayed out, etc. I didn't get that far into this. It's just an example and showing you the magic behind the scenes on how you can create buttons that apply selections and then also change their selection states to show which buttons are active or not active. Okay, let me know what you think in the comments below. This is a great example of a tip that you can use at a session at Connect in June. And I hope to see you guys there. Take care.